The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Every now and then, yourselves this question. Will I be alive in 1975? Well, you know what tremendous advances medical science has made in the last generation... One result is that the percentage of men and women over 65 years of age is now two-thirds larger than it was in 1910. Twenty-five years from now, the percentage will undoubtedly be even larger. So, no question about it. The chances are good you will be alive in 75. And in exactly 15 minutes, we'll have a suggestion which will show you how life insurance with the Equitable Life Assurance Society can help you make the most of this long life that's ahead of you. Tonight's FBI file, Old Lady Larceny. There are certain incontrovertible facts about which no well-informed person can argue. Facts which are accepted to be as valid as the truth that the atomic bomb is deadly. But there are other facts which are equally true, which are not accepted. And for the most part, they concern people. There are currently some two billion people in the world. Despite what some would have you believe, the accident of geography has nothing to do with whether or not they are good people or evil ones. For no person anywhere in the world is composed exclusively of good qualities or bad. Everyone has a capacity for both. In some, the good is paramount, and public-spirited citizens are the result. Others give way to evil, and criminals are born. But because the two basic possibilities are present in everyone, good and evil do not have two different appearances. You cannot judge a person by how he looks to you. The safest thing to do is always to remember that the meanest man in the world may sing the sweetest song, and often does. Tonight's FBI file opens in Los Angeles, California. Emmy Lake, an elderly white-haired lady, is seated in the living room of her modest apartment, which is located in the residential section of the city. She is busily knitting as the front door opens. Oh, is that you, Paul? Yes, Emmy. Uh, I'm in the living room, dear. Oh. <laughs> you know, I was just hoping you'd come home early today. There's a movie at the Tivoli that I'm so anxious to see. <laughs> it's Van Johnson. Uh-huh. And there's one of those cartoons that you like playing there, too. You know, that one with the rabbit in it? Uh, you do like that rabbit, don't you? I... I guess so. Paul, don't you feel well? Huh? Well, you look so down in the mouth. Is something wrong, dear? Yes, Emmy. Well, what is it? I've been fired. What? Mr. Sutter said my services were no longer required. What? Why, that can't be. What, what happened, dear? He said that I was too old. That my hand was too shaky. That's ridiculous. He said he was getting a younger man to do the job. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Why, Paul, you're the best forger in the business. He doesn't seem to think so. Well, I do. There isn't a man in the entire profession that can handle a pen like you do. Thank you, Emmy. I mean it. Well, for land's sake, you've done nothing else for the past 30 years. I know. That's why it's pretty hard to take. Well, I, I'm not going to stand for it. What can you do? Well, 
I can have a talk with Mr. Sutter. Oh, now, Emmy, what's done is done. Oh. Let it be. I will not. I'm going over to his hotel to see him right now. Please. Now, now, now don't you argue with me. Uh, just hand me my shawl. <laughs> In the Los Angeles field office of the FBI, Special Agent Jim Taylor is busy working at his desk. Oh, Jim. Oh, yes, Ned. I'm going out for some lunch. You care to join me? No, thanks. I've got to write up this report. What are you working on? Well, I guess you might call it a continued story. Hmm? An old friend has come home to roost. Really? Who? All I can call him is Mr. X. He's a check passer. He's turned up periodically here in town for a couple of years now. Oh, haven't you got anything on him at all? No, he's a pretty clever boy. No, I've gotten his description a dozen times, but he has no distinguishing features that set him apart from any one of a thousand honest businessmen. Oh. What's his technique? He works hotels, uses legitimate credit cards. His forged checks have the signature of the real owner of the card. Well, what does he get these cards? Oh, I understand they can be purchased by the dozen from pickpockets who in turn have lifted them from the owner. How large are the checks? Never more than $100, and that's what makes it tough. These small operations are always the hardest to track down. Is that check there his most recent effort? Mm-hmm. That's it. What about fingerprints, Jim? Well, the ones that I've sent to Washington in the past have been treated with fumes, but so many people had handled the checks, it was impossible to get any clear prints. I see. I'm sending this one on to the laboratory now. Well, maybe we'll have better luck this time. I hope so. Well, I'd better get down to lunch. Can I bring you up anything, Jim? Yes. The man who's passing these checks. <laughs> Mrs. Lake. Oh, just a minute. Well, hello there, Emmy. Hello, Mr. Souter. Come on in. Thank you. Well, say, I haven't seen you in a long time. Mm, I know. Sit down, won't you? Uh, thanks. I suppose you've come here to talk about Paul, huh? Yes. He told you what happened? Indeed he did. And, Mr. Sir, I think that it was a wicked thing for you to do. Now, Emmy, I want you to hear my side of it. I have a business to maintain, Emmy. And unfortunately, in business, there's no sentiment. Well, you certainly have proven that. Well, those last three checks he wrote for me were so bad, I was almost ashamed to pass them. I don't believe it. Emmy, look, his hand shakes like a castanet. Mr. Sutter, even if he forged with his left hand, he'd do better than any of these come lately could with a right. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. Don't you realize how many years he spent in this profession? Are you aware that one of the first signatures he forged was President McKinley? I know that, Emmy. Well, then he certainly deserves more respect than you gave him today. Look, you're just wasting your time, Emmy. My mind is made up. I have no further use for it. You, you're a cruel man, Mr. Sutherland. Oh, now, Emmy, I think you'd better be running along. Oh, well, very well, but, but I think I should warn you. You're going to regret ever having done this. Paul is going to prove to you that he's better today than he ever was. How's the check passing business, Jim? Oh, hello, Ned. Anything turn up? Something is right now. Oh? This teletype. Looks like it's loaded with information. There we are. Oh, what's the story? Well, that last check I sent to Washington's the one I've been waiting for. Evidently, it wasn't handled too much because there are only a few fingerprints on it. Good. The laboratory has identified one set as belonging to one George Sutter, alias Thomas Sutter, alias Thomas Clay, alias William Clay, alias William Brooks. Well, he's sort of a one-man club. Yeah. What's his record? He's a confidence man, bogus check passer. He's had several convictions. Anything else on him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says that he always made Los Angeles his headquarters. Well, you already suspected that. Yes. Teletype also states that in the past he's maintained an account in one of the Los Angeles banks under one of his aliases. Well, if he follows that pattern, it's a definite lead. Yes, I know. I think I'll check with all banks at once. Paul? Yes, Emmy? Uh, where are you? I'm out here in the kitchen. Oh, oh goodness. I, I thought you'd gone out. Yes? 
see Mr. Sutter? Yes. What did he say? He talked nonsense. Pure nonsense. I I'm very provoked with him. And now don't you go getting upset. I made some hot tea. It's right oh. there on the stove. Oh, that's nice. And I set out some of your favorite cookies. Oh, you're a dear. I just... Uh, well, Paul, what... What in the world are you doing? I'm just experimenting with something. What? I'm drawing a picture. Oh, my, what a handsome face. It looks familiar. Who is it? Alexander Hamilton. Well, what in the world are you drawing him for? His picture's on the $10 bill. Oh, Paul, surely you're not trying to counterfeit money. Well, just thought I'd try my hand at it. You just tear that right up. Well, isn't it any good? Well, of course it is, but that isn't the point. I'm not going to have you starting at the bottom in a new business just because of that mean Mr. Sutter. I mean, I got to do something. You're going to stay right in your own line. Now, you give me that picture. Very well. There. What can I do in my own line, Emmy? Well, I gave that a great deal of thought all the way home. Yes? Yeah. And I thought up a way for you to show me that your work is better than it ever was. Oh, Emmy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got a plan. Uh, now, here's what we're going to do. Special Agent Kern. Matt, Jim Taylor. Hello, Jim. I'm around here in Mr. Hood's office. Yeah? I just located a bank account in the name of George Sutter. That's one of the check passes aliases. Yes, I remember. They gave me an address on him, but I doubt if it's any good. Why? Well, it's over three years old now. The bank tells me that he's been calling there in person every two or three months to pick up his statements. I see. However, I'm going over there and check it anyway. Uh, meanwhile, Ned. Yes? Mr. Hood has assigned you to the case, too. He wants you to go over to the bank. First National. Look over Sutter's account, huh? Okay. After I've checked this address, Evan Sutter, I'll meet you there at the bank. Doing what the mystery needs, the mystery needs. La, 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 how did you make out? Oh, fine, just fine. Did you get the money? Yeah, indeed, I did. Look, yes, look at it. Good. An awful lot. Yeah, $5,000. You certainly are a clever woman. Goodness, you're the one who deserves all the credit. Uh, are we all packed? Yes. Good. Where are the bags? Uh, right over there. You know, Emmy, I've just been reading this travel folder. Uh -huh. Las Vegas must be a beautiful place. Oh, yes, I'm sure we'll have a good time there. I guess we'd better get started, hmm? Uh, well, not yet. I want to make a phone call first. Oh, all right. Oh, I bought you a present on the way home. Really? What is it? One of those lifetime pens. Oh, Emmy, you shouldn't have done that. Nonsense. It's a good investment. Central Hotel. Oh, oh, hello. I'd, I'd like to talk to Mr. George Sutter, please. One moment, please. Uh, goodness, I hope he's in. Hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Sutter. Who's this? Uh, this is Emmy Lake. Oh, hello, Emmy. I called to tell you that Paul and I are leaving town. Uh, we're taking a little vacation. Oh, good. Before we go, I thought that you should know one thing. Yeah, what's that? Well, uh, you know how you said that Paul was an old has-been? Yeah. Well, he forged a check the other day that I deposited in my bank. Well? The check cleared today. And the signature was so good that we were able to get $5,000 out of the victim's account. Well, why are you telling me this? Well, call your bank, Mr. Sutter. Huh? You were the victim. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI helps provide security for your country. Now let's talk briefly about another kind of security. Security for those who want to be independent as they grow older. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Cross, who are you kidding anyway? 
My whole salary is eaten up by taxes and current expenses. So when you talk to me about saving for future independence, I say it can't be done. Ah, but it can. Thousands of Equitable Society members whose income is no larger than yours are looking forward to complete independence in their 60s through an Equitable Life Assurance Society Independent 60s plan. Better give me the lowdown on this plan, Mr. Cross. The Independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society has these three features. First, it costs considerably less than you probably think, especially if you're covered by Social Security. Second... You can create your retirement estate for the full amount the moment you sign the contract. You don't spend years wondering whether or not you're going to accumulate enough money to be independent in your 60s. You're sure of it because it's guaranteed by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Third, this equitable plan gives you a definite goal and provides you with a method of reaching that goal. Yes, there's nothing finer than being independent in your 60s, being your own boss, Able to do the things you've always wanted to do. You know, I think I ought to look into this plan. Then I suggest that you get in touch with an Equitable Life Assurance Society representative. He'll give you the facts on the Independent 60s plan. Look in your phone book for the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, Old Lady Lawsony. The Bible, besides being America's best-selling literature, is also a handbook on the proper way to conduct your daily life. For if there is one certain moral to be drawn from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, it is the biblical quote that all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. The swindler who made his illicit livelihood by cashing worthless checks in turn found himself the victim of a similar maneuver. But society has not benefited because one charlatan robbed another. So for your FBI, this case goes on apace. And it will go on until the guilty criminals are arrested and made to realize that the power and the majesty of the law are greater than the power any criminal assumes for himself. Tonight's FBI file continues in downtown Los Angeles in front of the First National Bank. Special Agent Jim Taylor is just parking his car. Hold it, Jim. Oh, hello, Ned. No need for you to get out. I've gotten all the information. Oh, fine. Head out Fifth Street. We've got a stop to make. All right. How'd you make out? Well, I went to the address the bank gave me. As I sort of expected, Mr. Sutter doesn't live there anymore. Uh -huh. In fact, he moved away two years ago. No forwarding address, I imagine. No. No, what happened at the bank? They received a phone call from Sutter just before I arrived there. Really? What about? Checking up on his balance. Uh huh? It seems they had just cleared a check for $5,000 on his account the day before. Drawn against his account? Yes. <laughs> and this will hand you a laugh. Huh. He was quite upset about it. He claimed that the check was forged. You mean someone turned the tables <laughs> on him? <laughs> Evidently, yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Hey, did uh, Sutter say anything about coming into the bank? No, but I've alerted them in case he does. Oh. Did you find out who drew this $5,000 check? Yes, a woman named Emmy Lake. She had an account at the Hillside Bank. What do you mean, had? When Sutter's money cleared, she took it and closed out her account. No. Did you get her address? Yes, that's where we're going now. Paul, dear. Yes, Emmy? Just look at those mountains. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. Real majestic. Oh. Uh, what time are we due into Las Vegas? Oh, about an hour. Oh, it's a pity. I'm enjoying this so. Do you know what it reminds me of, Emmy? What? Our honeymoon. Oh. Remember that horse and wagon we stole? Oh, indeed, I do. That little hotel we went up to in the mountains? <laughs> yes. Oh, what greenhorns we were in those days. Paid for everything with cash. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I know. What, what are you writing? Uh, just breaking in my new pen. Whose signature is that? The president of the railroad. I copied it off the timetable. Well, what are you going to use it for? Well, we've ordered lunch sent in here, haven't we? You mean you want to sign for it? I was considering it. Oh, no. Don't, Paul. After all, we're on a vacation. Doesn't seem to be anyone home, Ned. No. Wait a minute, there's someone coming down the hall. Uh-huh. Can I help you, gentlemen? Oh, yes. We're looking for a woman named Emmy Lake. I believe that this is her apartment. It was her apartment. They gave it up earlier today. They? She and her husband. They went off, bag and baggage. Do you work here in the building? Yes. My husband's the superintendent. Have you any idea where these people went? No, they didn't say. Oh, we're special agents of the FBI. Oh. Here are my credentials. I see. Oh, I wonder if we could look around the apartment, please. Surely. I, I have their key right here. That's fine, thanks. Are the lakes in trouble? Well, this is just an investigation. Go right in. Thank you. Go ahead and Right. I hope they didn't do anything wrong. They're such a nice old couple. Is this their furniture? No, it belongs to the building. I I've already cleaned the place up. I don't think you'll find anything. What did they leave behind? Some food and newspapers and waste paper. It's all in a barrel out back. I see. Maybe you'd like to look at it. The other man did. Oh? What other man? A fellow who came here just before you did. He seemed awful anxious to know where the lakes were, too. What'd he look like? Wait a minute, Ned. Well, uh, I have a picture of Sutter here. Madam, could you tell me, was this the man? Yes, that's him. Did he find anything in that barrel? Yes, a, a travel folder. I, I don't know what that meant to him. Did you see the folder? Not well enough to tell what place it was from. As soon as he found it, he ran right out of here. He had a cab waiting outside. Did you by any chance hear him tell the driver where to go? Yes, I did. He said the Central Hotel. Mm -hmm. Ned, it's pretty apparent that this old couple have beaten Sutter to his own game. They took that $5,000 from his account and have run out of town. And Sutter figures that travel folder will lead them to them. That's about it. Let's get a complete description of Mr. and Mrs. Lake, then we'll drive right over to the Central Hotel. <laughs> What happened, Jim? I just checked with the hotel clerk. Yes? I showed him Sutter's picture. He recognized it all right. Good. Is he in his room? No. Checked out half an hour ago. Oh, what a break. Mm -hmm. Wait. Uh, how about checking the travel desk? Sutter I might have... just talked to them, Ned. He didn't get any transportation from them. If that old couple had a travel folder, they're probably heading for a resort. Yes, I know. But there are plenty of resorts. If we'd only got... Hold it. Huh? Ned, I've got an idea. Come on. Emmy. Uh, yes, dear? Uh, can we take a little walk around the grounds? Well, I think you've had enough exercise for the day. Uh, we're going right to the cottage now. I'm not tired. Well, you certainly should be. Four games of shuffleboard. And I enjoyed it. Oh, and I was very proud of you, dear. That man you beat was less than half your age. Oh, I was just lucky. That's all. <laughs> Well, I called for some tea and cookies while you were playing. The hotel is sending them over. Oh, good. Go ahead, dear. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Hmm? Uh, Mr. Sutter. Surprise? Uh, well, yes. What are you doing here? Well, I went to your apartment and found the travel folder you threw away advertising this hotel. Oh. Then I called here to see if you'd made a reservation. When I found out that you'd taken this cottage, I took the next plane. Well, that was a very sneaky thing to do. You know why I'm here, of course. Uh, vacation? No, money. I want my $5,000. Well, now, look. Now, uh, now, just a minute, Paul. I'll handle this. Uh, Mr. Sutter, we are not giving you back that money. Oh, no? No. And if you don't like my attitude, you, you can call in the police. I'm not that stupid. Well, then how else are you going to prove that it's yours? By taking it away from you. Mr. Sutter, you can't... Hold everything, Sutter. Oh. What? Oh, 
Oh, are you the young man with the tea? No, ma'am. I'm from the FBI. Huh? FBI? F- goodness, well, what are you doing here? I followed Sutter. How'd you know I'd be here? I knew that you were looking for this old couple. I also learned that you found a travel folder that told you where they were. So I went to your hotel. Their record showed that before you checked out, you'd made a long-distance call here to Las Vegas. So I took a plane right up. Well, this certainly was a short vacation. Oh, I think I can arrange for a long one. For all of you. George Sutter, the bad check passer, and his erstwhile confederates, Paul and Emmy Lake, were tried for their many crimes in a federal court. They were all sentenced to long terms in the penitentiary. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI was closed not only because of the superior investigative work on the part of a special agent, but also because of the aid he received from two sections of FBI headquarters in Washington. The first of those sections is the laboratory, which is filled with skilled technicians all working towards scientifically exterminating the criminal. Their work with iodine fumes brought out the latent fingerprints on a check. And from there, the prints went to the identification section, a section which checks 20,000 sets of fingerprints every day for local police departments throughout the nation. There is no question but that the thousands of special agents throughout the country form a network of infinitely skilled specialists. But it is equally true that their task is made immeasurably easier because of the work the Washington headquarters does for them. For them, and thus for you, the American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. A little while ago, I gave you a few brief facts about the independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. To get full information, you'll want to ask your Equitable Society representative questions like these. Exactly how much will the plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How will it dovetail with my Social Security? He's got the answer to that, too. What income will it give me in my 60s? Your Equitable Society representative will give you the exact figure. Ask him to drop around tomorrow for a friendly visit. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Innocent Thief. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another exciting story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Innocent Thief, on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.